you know those Zelda games where you have the main quest and uh, a specific track to walk on and all of a sudden they give you the option of go off the beaten track uncharted territories and explore for yourself well in those games I always choose to spend some hours traveling around the map in these pixelated maps and landscapes where there is nothing for 10, 15, 20, 30 minutes, one hour, hours and then eventually you find this little gem if you play the Skyrim, Morrowind, the Elder Scroll, Breath of the Wild, you know what I'm talking about well the main area of the resort is behind me and I decided to walk for probably 20 minutes along the beach in an area where there are no tourists the only thing in here is a, a raven that I've been seeing for the last five minutes hearing as well and some birds look they're flying away now and over there I can see a pack of pelicans and I really want to fly the drone close to them but a pelican is a big bird and if they start flying and crash on my drone well the drone is well gone because you can see there are probably there is a piece of sand that goes out for a few hundred meters they are right in front of me right now and uh, well if I crash the drone over there it would be either in the middle of the water or very far from me so I'm still thinking about that and I don't want to annoy them and even less I don't want to hurt them but the footage I can get from that that would be amazing so I'll give it a try now today I was making a video because I was thinking about all these tourists that I've been seeing for a week now because this is the end basically the end of my first week in Monkey Maya it's fantastic I'm learning the menu three different menus actually uh, of two different venues because the same company owns two venues here and uh, well it's been busy there are uh, 1200 or 1500 people 1500 people on the camping now some are leaving already but it's been busy yesterday during breakfast me and um, the other chef we did uh, around seven thousand dollars of breakfast so running around a lot I'm finishing my week with 54 hours which is good money even for Australia and when I come back I will have one week in Perth and then I go straight away to Europe enjoying two months of freedom with no stress whatsoever but what I was saying is that uh, I've been thinking of all the families here about all the families and the moms and the dads and I've been dreaming for a while of having children of course you need the right person as well which I think I found but uh, it made me think that uh, well there is a aphorism I love which is uh, your children are not your children they are the children of life longing for life itself and this applies to the fact that whenever I see children I would think uh, of a guy called Gabor Mate. for the people that don't know I've been studying childcare education for two years of my life because I wanted to work in childcare so eventually life happened and I went working full-time as a chef for the last uh, five years right now and uh, I've always been fascinated about psychology and well children psychology because it's the time of your life when your personality forms uh, your perception of the world is altered completely forever the lens through which you see the world is defined in those six seven years of your life and uh, well it's very important to understand how you can influence uh, them for the best so it's something i'm very fascinated of but coming back to the parents thing every time I see a mom or a dad being overly apprehensive I always think uh, that is selfish to the development of the child and I'm not saying 
scenarios where the child or the children are rescued from uh, an immediate threat that by any means is necessary that's why the mortality rate compared to the wilderness to the wildlife is so low because uh, if you look at what's happening in the wilderness and people have this uh, fairy tale imagination from wilderness if you want to see how life is in the wilderness the best page i can think of is called uh, nature is metal i'm completely obsessed with that and i'm not talking about this direct threats of course the mothers and the fathers have to look after the child but when the child wants to express itself a comment like uh, why you are not like other kids or don't do that it's stupid don't do that it's dangerous well maybe they're trying to ride a skateboard or they want to balance themselves on a piece of wood they want to try to do a somersault or climb a tree in my opinion you should let them do this with supervision of course and coming back to Gabor Mate he says that uh, in order to develop a healthy childhood growth the child has to feel a sense of belonging so the parents need to be there and authenticity which means that when the personality of the kid the kids are being revealed for the first time you don't try to suppress them by say don't do this don't do that be like other children that's not nurturing that's suppressing so i always think uh, well i don't have children if you're wondering but i want to probably two two is a good number and possibly at least one girl because girls grow way faster than boys on a mental level their perception is way better than men i grew up with my head way up my butt growing up i woke up when i was 21 23 and not even that was scraping the surface now i'm 34 and i'm realizing how the world works i'm finally understanding business i open my own business i'm making money i understand the dynamics between relationships and so many things that nobody teaches you and it took me a long while to learn them because i'm super naive and uh, a girl probably develops this kind of awareness when she is 13 maybe younger because she needs to a man they just meh what's happening around me i have no clue and i'm thinking about this because i see a lot of kids that are trying to do their own thing and uh the moms or the dads won't allow them because uh, it's not socially acceptable to make noise or to paint your face or i remember when i was um, in high school so it must have been 15 16 years old i drew a tree on a blank piece of paper and i suck at drawing i still suck at drawing i have a great imagination but the hand is my limit i can't draw i always wanted to learn but when i was uh, around that age i drew a tree on a piece of paper and my dad entered in the room and it was a moment when he was angry and he said what is this shit what is it supposed to be and from that moment i never drew anything anymore until i was 25 27 because uh well i'm drawing sketches for my story for my book a sci-fi book i'm writing or the storylines uh, of my videos in a horrible way but i understand what scene i need to film and the sequence of the scenes which helps me to minimize the time wasted my point is um, you have a responsibility as a human being to transfer whatever things you unlock to the next generation i know it's hard but also to hold your breath smiling when something makes you extremely uncomfortable and that applied to kids means you allow them to discover experiment always maintaining all your eyes open and uh, guarding them from behind without them realizing maybe but i think it's selfish to say stop because of a feeling you have being uncomfortable and the rent today comes from the fact that um, growing up i never went through any challenge because my mom was overly anxious about me trying things I did skydiving when I was 19 
decided on the same day because a friend asked me and we skydived from 4,500 meters, which I think is 12,000 feet. And I decided within one hour, if I asked my parents, they would have said, no, are you crazy? No, no, no. And I would never gone, would have never gone through that experience because they would have stopped me. And the other thing that um, I was reading about is um, challenges form the character. So if you have a kid and you ask them at five years old to cross the road and buy something for you with a, a given amount of money, you will need to do calculations maybe. You will need to interact with another human being, explain what he wants and come back with the thing you asked. That's a very small challenge. And then after this is perform with success, you give another challenge and so on and on and on, making bigger and bigger loops that he has or she has to jump through it, through them. So she develops or he develops confidence. And I was reading that most of the kids nowadays, they experience anxiety or mental disorders like uh, a wrong perception of themselves or lack of confidence or whenever their opinion is challenged they feel insecure they go anxious or have panic attacks because growing up they never they were never pushed through those challenges and of course you don't go from zero to hundred in one minute you go slowly increasing the noob so they get used to the feeling and they know how to ride it and uh, I've been looking around, I've been listening to things and seeing body languages and uh, the way some parents interact with kids and I always think some major damage is being done in front of my eyes. And I'm journaling it because I want to remember this in the future. This was my rant about the kind of parent I want to be in the future. In a beautiful place staring at pelicans which I'm gonna show you right now have a good day and I'll see you in the next video and if you like the rant by any chance let me know what you think even if you didn't like it let me know let me know I want to know I want to connect we are in this space this is a weapon not a weapon a tool this is a tool It's one of the greatest tool ever created by man photography and videos are something extremely powerful and to have the internet in connection with this allows people to get together make connections have references and uh, well get knowledge that before was impossible to get so I hope in the future I will leave a better and bigger and stronger impact to whoever is watching my videos and I know now it's probably less than 50 people every video but Rome wasn't built in a day so I'm here to stay let me know and I'll see you in the next one